Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Suction Stories. My name's George, and I'm going to be your host for Suction Stories. This is part one, and what we're going to be doing with Suction Stories is essentially showing you the equipment that you require for suctioning out a patient, as well as how to suction out that patient properly. So what I want to focus on first is the type of suction we're going to be talking about. And what we're going to be covering in this part is tracheal suctioning as well as pharyngeal suctioning, the equipment that is required for both of those techniques. Now when it comes to suctioning out your patient, regardless of, regardless of whether it's tracheal suctioning or pharyngeal suctioning, depending on where you are and the acuity level of your patient or how critically ill they are, some of these procedures could be done with sterile technique, some of these procedures could be done using clean technique. The other thing to consider is what type of suction device do you have to use for your tracheal suctioning. If it's open suctioning, then you could be doing this again with sterile technique or clean technique, again depending on the acuity level of your patient. For example, are they in the intensive care unit and are they really, really sick or are they really in the, or sorry, are they in the emergency unit and are they really unwell? And do they need that level of precaution using sterile technique? Or is this a chronic patient that has an airway that's inside a nursing home? And uh, with chronic patients, you may be fine with using clean technique. So check the protocols of the hospitals that you work in or the institutions that you work in and what's acceptable for that type of patient that you have. Now, if you're using closed suctioning, the closed suction system is essentially the suction catheter is encased in its own sterile sheath and you never come into contact with that suction catheter. The only thing the suction catheter comes into contact with is the inside of the patient's endotracheal tube and the patient's own lungs. So that catheter is used repetitively since it's withdrawn back into its sheath, so it can be used again at a later time. Since it's exposed to the patient's own flora inside their airway or inside their lungs, we can use clean technique with that procedure. Regardless of which one you're doing, it'll either be clean or sterile. So when it comes to your, pre nah, your personal protective equipment, ah, sorry about that, it's been a long day. When it comes to your personal protective equipment, make sure you've got the adequate personal protection equipment to protect yourself as well as the patient from anything that could be potentially harmful to each of you. So wash your hands and then don your PPE, the appropriate stuff. So if it's clean technique, get your clean gloves, make sure you've got the right size for your hands. If it's sterile technique, you might need sterile gloves. Now if you are using sterile gloves, make sure you have a mask on first before you don the gloves so you don't spit all over it in case you're talking while you're doing that. You don't want to contaminate that sterile field. The other thing that you probably would want to have, and again it's optional depending on what type of suctioning you're doing, is a mask. A mask to protect yourself from the patient in case there's airborne particles that occur when you suction the patient out, out which is prone to happen. So have your mask as well. Now with respect to the equipment that we need, we also have to consider what we want to put on our patient to protect them. So one of the things that you may need, depending on whether it's open or closed suctioning, is blue pads. Place the blue pad on the patient's chest with the absorbent side up, and that's usually a white color. So you want to have the absorbent side up, so if anything comes out of the patient's airway, whether it's out of their tracheal airway or out of their pharyngeal airway, that will hopefully land on the absorbent side. So the nurse will be happy or the other healthcare providers will be happy as well because this pad's gonna protect the linen as well as the patient from any secretions that come out of them. What other kinds of equipment can we use? What do you think? If you guess suction tubing, you're absolutely correct. So grab some suction tubing if you don't already have it. Okay, so suction tubing. This is non-collapsible suction tubing, has the wide ends and it's fairly rigid tubing, but it's still quite pliable at the same time. This goes from your collection unit to the device that you're going to be suctioning out the patient with. With respect to the collection units, let's just zoom in here for a second. These are the examples of your collection units right over here. And they can be different types of collection units themselves. These are going to be hooked up to your suction regulators. So know a little bit about your suction regulators and how they function, how they're connected to the collection units themselves, and then when you turn the suction regulators on, how to set the pressure on each suction regulator. And there's another video that I have on YouTube that kind of goes through that stuff. So please review that and check the protocols for the suction levels that you're requiring for the type of suction that you're doing, whether it's tracheal or pharyngeal types of suctioning, as well as the patient population, because it's going to be slightly different for 
your neonatal and infant populations compared to your pediatric pa populations as well as your adults. So we need our suction tubing connected to, connected to our collection units, which are connected to the uh, suction regulators, which are connected to the wall outlets, which are connected to the knee bone. No, they're not connected to the knee bone. What else do we need? Well, you might require, especially if you need a couple lengths of the suction tubing connected together, something called a 5-in-1 connector. Okay? That's a 5-in-1 connector. And what this 5-in-1 connector does, if you look at it, it's pretty much equal on both sides of the centerpiece here, but it's allow, it allows you to connect two different pieces of tubing together to make one longer length. And because it's called a 5-in-1, and you see how its diameter changes, um, you can take two tubings of the exact same length and connect them together, or you can take, sorry, two tubings of the exact same diameter and connect them together, or you can take two tubings that have different diameters, and as long as they connect up to this connector here, they should be able to, to connect to each other. Right? So if you need to connect two pieces of tubing together, a 5 one connector can be your friend in that situation. So you might need one of these or a couple of them, depending on how much length of tubing you need for sectioning out your patient. The next thing you're going to acquire is the suction device itself. And because the focus of this is going to be closed suctioning, I want to show you the two different types of closed suction systems that are specific to the different types of airways that you have. Now the first one I want to show you is the tracheal suction device. This is the one for tracheotomies. So if you look on this, it says closed suction system for adults because they are specific to the population, age population of your patient. This one also says tracheostomy right over here, and it's a 14 French. What's, what is unique to the tracheal system is it's got this T-piece configuration to fit onto the tracheotomy tube right over here, plus the length of the catheter and sheath is a lot shorter since it's meant to be used on a tracheotomy tube. So this wouldn't work really well on your ventilated patients. Okay? Also note the size of the catheter. This is a 14 French, and sizing is really important. Because whether you're suctioning out a tracheotomy tube or an endotracheal tube, you want to make sure that the outer diameter of your suction catheter is somewhere between one-half to two-thirds the inner diameter of the endotracheal tube for safety. That will prevent complications from occurring while you're suctioning your patient that's being ventilated. Okay, So 14 French gauge suction catheter. To get the external diameter and convert from French gauge to millimeters, all you simply do is take 14 and divide it by 3 because every French gauge unit is one-third of a millimeter. Okay, This one's actually pretty good because it tells you the diameter right over here and says it's 4.6 millimeters. All right? So know the size of the suction catheter. Make sure it's safe for the size of endotracheal tube or tracheotomy tube that you're using regardless of whether it's uh, a tracheal or endotracheal tube. Okay, so this one's specific for a tracheotomy tube. The other type of closed suction system is specific for endotracheal tubes, and it looks something like this. Very similar, you can see, the packaging is very similar. Closed suction system for adults, based uh, Ballard Trait Care technology. But look at the picture right over here, and then look at what it says right over here. This is a double swivel elbow endotracheal tube suction device. So specific for endotracheal tubes, and if you look at it, Here's your elbow, okay? So there's swiveling elbow. This is where you connect your end tidal device to, your end tidal adapter for your end tidal tracing and, and capnometry, as well as a tapered flex tube would go here as well. The sheath and catheter are a lot longer than the tracheotomy tube one, so with this one you can go down far enough down your patient's airway to suction out the trachea. With the, uh, the tracheotomy tube one, if you had that one attached to an endotracheal tube, it would not work, first of all, and secondly, it would be way too short to suction them out. So for endotracheal tubes, make sure you have the right size of tube, or the right type of closed suction system for the endotracheal tube that's specific to it, for the specific age of the patient as well, so child or pediatric versus uh, adult, and also check the diameter of it by looking at the, four, at the French gauge size, and this again is a 14 French one as well. Okay? the closed suction systems. Now these closed suction systems will probably already be in line somewhere between the manual resuscitator and the endotracheal tube or tracheotomy tube or between the mechanical ventilator and the endotracheal tube or tracheotomy tube. If it's not already there, then simply detach your ventilation source from the patient's endotracheal tube and attach the endotracheal tube closed suction system to it. 
and likewise if it's the tracheotomy tube, detach the ventilation source from the tracheotomy tube and then put the specific configuration of tracheotomy tube closed suction system on the tracheotomy tube. All right, so the closed suction system needs to be put in place between the ventilator circuit and the patient's endotracheal tube. Okay, so that's the closed suctioning. And that's for tracheal suctioning. Now let's look at the equipment that's required for pharyngeal suctioning. Now when it comes to suctioning out the pharynx, you're really going to be removing all the secretions that are somewhere inside the patient's pharynx, but if they're allowed to build up over a period of time, which can get quite nasty for the patients, the secretions can accumulate and they can go all the way up to the patient's teeth and then even drip down the side of the patient's face. And you don't want that to occur. So you need to be diligent with your airway care and ensure that you're suctioning out the patient's trachea as well as suctioning out the patient's pharynx. Now to remove the secretions from the patient's pharynx, the back of the pharyngeal wall, there's a couple different ways that we can do that and a couple different pieces of equipment that accomplish that. The first thing we could use is a Yonker suction catheter or a tonsil tip suction catheter that looks something like this or like that in 3D, jumping right out of the screen at you. These are pretty good. They are a little bit wider and they can remove secretions quite fast. The thing is, they're very rigid, so they're quite hard. They can't be inserted nasally, obviously. And when you're inserting it, you have to be aware of this distal tip winds up inside your patient's airway. So really, you should be only inserting this as far as you can see because you don't know what you're going to be jabbing or hitting if you insert it anywhere farther than that. So typically around the back of the pharynx, just behind the tongue would be as far as you probably would go with this for safety, but I know people probably might put it in, in further. I don't advocate that, but you've got this as an option for removing secretions from your patient's oral pharynx, posterior pharynx, hyperpharyn hyper hypopharyngeal area. The other thing that you can use is a tracheal or a suction catheter that looks like this. This is called a suction catheter. And you can use these for open suctioning down the patient's tracheotomy tube, but you can also use these for pharyngeal suctioning as well. So this suction catheter is quite pliable, can be inserted nasally as well as orally. And with this catheter, because it's soft, it's got a soft tip to it, and it conforms quite nicely to the patient's airway, you can insert this one a little bit farther than the oral or tonsil tip suction. And this one can be inserted so it goes beyond the base of the tongue and lies somewhere within that posterior pharyngeal wall. Because if you think of it, if your patient's supine, the lowest part of the airway is going to be that posterior hypopharyngeal area. So if you can put the suction catheter down there and leave it there like a straw in a glass of a smoothie, that were filled with smoothie, you can suction all those secretions out right from the bottom of that patient's airway. All right? So very handy to have. They also come in French gauge units as well, but it doesn't really matter what size of French gauge we use when we pharyngeal suction out our patient, because right? it's pharyngeal suctioning. Remember, for pharyngeal suctioning, the suction level that we use for our patients is going to be full line. Okay? With tracheal suctioning, it will be specific to the age of patient that you're doing. So the different patient categories, neonatal and infant versus pediatric versus adult. So be aware of the specific negative pressures you're going to apply down the trachea when you're tracheal suctioning out your patient, whether it's closed suctioning or open suctioning. Just a little bit left here with respect to the equipment. Now the last thing that I want to show you for equipment is the saline ampules. These are saline single dose ampules come in a box like this or whatever the box looks like that the manufacturer makes. Essentially the ampules come in a string like this. All you have to do is carefully detach one of the ampules off for use. Now the ampules have a couple of purposes. The main purpose we use these ampules for is to clean out the closed suction tracheal catheter after we're done, completely done suctioning out the patient. So one of the last things to do, if not the last thing to do, before you leave your patient's bedside is to clean out the suction catheter, that closed suction catheter, and the suction tubing. And you use one of these pinkies to do so, all right? Or one of these saline ampules to do so. We, we call them pinkies here. The other thing that the contents of this ampule can be used for is to elicit a cough from the patient. So on the tracheal suction system that you have, the endotracheal tube, and it's also on the endotracheal tube, uh, the tracheotomy tube one as well, there's this little adapter right over here. And what you can do is take the pinky and hook it up to here, and then apply suction as you're squeezing the pinky. And what that will do is it'll clean out the suction catheter, as well as the, the suction catheter, as well as the suction tubing that it's attached to. So pinkies can be used for cleaning that out, but again, 
we can also use it for instilling it down that same channel to elicit a cough from the patient and hopefully get them to expectorate more of their secretions. Okay? So pinkies, you might be using those or seeing those around your units depending on, on where you work. You can also inject with a syringe normal saline down the endotracheal tube for the same effect for cleaning or for instilling solution. But again, if it's for cleaning, apply suction while you're doing that, but only apply it till the suction catheter is clean or for a maximum of 10 to 15 seconds. So that, in essence, is pretty much all the suction equipment that you're going to require and how it's used. And that ends pretty much part one of Suction Stories with George. So I hope you found this informative and useless. <laughs> useless. Haha! <laughs> Useful. It's been a long day, like I said, and I still haven't had enough chocolate in me to, to keep me going. But anyways, I hope you found this informative and kind of interesting. Let me know what you thought. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. But leave me some, some comments in terms of, of what you thought about this. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a great day. And if you get a chance to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And a big hello and shout out to all my viewers across the globe. Hey, thanks very much for subscribing to my channel. Tell your friends about it. And, and uh, like I said, hope you have a great day. George out for now until we see you again in part two of ventilation of suction stories, which is going to be how do you tracheal suction now a patient and pharyngeal suction. So that's part two. Till next time.